It's time to talk sports. It's time for the show. When you hear this song on the radio, it's time to tune in. Better act fast. Let me get that part of Potograph. Sports Talk Radio. Starting now. Let's go. What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 175 of Let Me Get That Potograph. As always, my name is Drew or the DH, and joining me, my co host, Scott Rappaport. What's up, dude? You know, dude, I feel like 175 should be a milestone episode. It is. Well, you know, I mean, it is. It's like every, every, you know, on the 25s, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. It, well, I mean, it is a milestone. It's a, it, it is a, it's a big milestone, in my opinion. Hey, we're twenty five away from two hundred. We'll be hitting that really soon. I know, but I feel like you know we should be doing like a party for this one. Um, yeah, you know. Uh, yeah, but no, we'll say we'll save it for we'll save it for two hundred. Hindsight and all that stuff. Yeah, <laughs> two hundred will definitely be a big one. But welcome everybody. Hope everyone is doing well. We have a jam packed show for you guys today. Uh, even though it's not a big party. There is a lot of news and a lot of stuff, Scott, to talk about, and um, we'll dive right into it. At least finally the news broke before we recorded instead of two hours after we recorded. Like everything else seems to have been, if you guys caught our well, video. It's, it's, only, it's coincidence week. because I got busy yesterday and we couldn't record on, a, on the Tuesday when we normally do. So Yeah, no, uh, I mean, it, we got lucky as Tom Brady has announced that he is retiring. Again, except Again. For, there's a couple of differences this time. Um, his contract is out, so he's not getting out of a contract. He could have gone anywhere he wanted, period. He couldn't have the first time, so there was a reason for retiring before. But it, Tom Brady retiring from football, the message he sent really seemed like it, uh, like he meant it. Um, I know he got the condo in Miami and everyone thought he was going to be a dolphin. No, that's where his kids live and he can't legally move them out of state. So, of course, he's going to get a beautiful house where his children are in the middle of a divorce. Um, and he's probably going to get it and he's probably going to get a, a bunch of other houses and right. a whole ton of other places, too. Right. I mean, and, and let, let's be honest, Tom Brady's not done with football. He's just done playing football. I mean, he. Well, I don't know. What's the what's the what's the over under on how long it takes him to come back? Well, I don't think he comes back. I don't. I, if you gave me an over under, I mean, I, if if you were giving me odds, the odds would have to be like uh, that he doesn't come back would be probably like minus five fifty or minus six hundred for me. Like I, it was different before because he was leaving New England and you knew he wanted to win a Super Bowl somewhere else to prove he could. Now he's done it, and he's he is a lot older. And you saw his age this year for the first time ever on the football field. You saw Tom Brady's age, and I think he, if anyone's going to look at that film and see it, it's going to be him. And so there's a big difference from when he retired from New England and he wanted to prove Belichick, the fans, the writers, anyone in the whoever it was that he could win elsewhere. Now he's done it. There, what else does he have to prove to himself or to anyone else? I think it's about doing, you know, kind of doing something, you know, a little bit different. And there's, you know, there's been a lot of discussions with the quarterback injuries and problems that the 49ers have had that Brady may end up there for on a one year contract. Because, you know, right. again, he grew up in the area. He grew up a Niners fan. Hey, and he also has ties. He also has business ties in Carolina. So there, he's been linked to Carolina with Orlovsky, who brought up all the business ties and relationships he has. There's a lot of places he could go that would. Yeah, be but I think I think the 49ers fit. would make sense because you've got the sentimental aspect of it to him as far as, you know, where he grew up, things like that. But then you also have the fact that, you know, that team is with the exception of the quarterback injuries, which is kind of what their downfall was, you know, and at the end. I think that team is stacked to and is primed to make a run next year at you know at the Super Bowl. No, so do I. No matter who the quarterback is, um, I think the 49ers, sit, which we'll talk a lot about them and uh, some of their quarterbacks here in just a few moments, but that I think that they're they're overly stacked at quarterback with multiple. Um, capable quarterbacks, I do think the system that they run with the players around them helps 
tremendously to be able to plug and play, which would be nice for Tom Brady um, to just jump and plug and play in there. And I could see him moving over there because that would probably be. But I mean, at the same time, you thought that they were going to win this year. And once again, I'm going to go back to Tom Brady did not look like Tom Brady this year. I'm sorry. And I mean, his card market showed it. His card market went down during the season. There was not the massive amount of hype that you always see for Brady cards. Carolina was within two was tied with them with three games left to win the division. I mean, and Carolina. Look, I mean, so Tom Brady. Well, that did wasn't not, really saying much because the division itself was, you know, of one course. Of the but that's my point. There. Tom Brady was not Tom Brady. Uh, that he was not the exact same Tom Brady. And so when you're talking about coming back or going for this one last ride, I don't know if plugging him into San Francisco gives them a better option than the quarterbacks that they have. I, I just don't. I, it, well, because it is the system there. It's 100% the system. And once they figure out how to use Christian McCaffrey, it's going to be a lot bigger and a lot worse. I mean, they might as well have used him at quarterback on uh, on Sunday because he probably would have been better than Johnson. He can throw, too. He, he can yeah. throw. He can throw. He can run. You know, you don't you don't have that thing. Honestly, that's what I would have done. Yeah. I was, you know what? Screw the fourth string quarterback. Let's just let McCaffrey run it. And, you know, run the line, make some passes, well, make some. It comes you know, runs. It comes back to things I've said a lot, and that's that that the Forty ers have not figured out how to use Christian McCaffrey the right way yet. We talked about it when we were talking about who we thought would go to the Super Bowl, and I, I said that I, I didn't think they'd figured out yeah. how to use him yet, and they haven't. And when they eventually do, unless they're forcing him to adapt to their system, which I think is stupid because he fits their system, you just need to expand his role. But, yeah, he should have played quarterback over Josh Johnson 100%. But Brady, yeah. uh, let, let's move to the card market for a few moments before we move on, on to uh, a couple other things relating to some quarterbacks in the league. But So Brady's card market now, he's done. Let's say he's done. Let's say he doesn't come back. He's done for right now. What do you see his card market doing in the future? Because it's always interesting when even an all-time great like Peyton Manning or someone like that retires. It's always interesting to see what happens with their cards. So what do you see Tom Brady's, you know, immediate and kind of long-term effect on his cards? Well... Uh, as far as the immediate effect goes, you know, this is a unique situation because we had it a year ago. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, Brady announces retirement. All of a sudden the cards shot through the roof and, you know, then he came back and they started to, you know, the and part of it was him, you know, starting the season, not playing very well. And part of it was just the market in general, sure. you know, being down overall. But the question is, now that he has retired for a second year in a row, will we see the same kind of bump? I don't think it's going to be as big as we saw last year. I think he gets a little bit of a bump. And then long term, I think, you know, I think there's the Hall of Fame bump that, you know, that's going to come. And I, I don't think there is, you know, if there's any player out there that, you know, you have questions on whether or not he is going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Well, yeah. Tom Brady. Yeah. I mean, there, there's no. There, there's no I mean, that's unanimous that. across the board immediately. Exactly. And, you know, I, I'm not sure if the NFL should do this, but, you know, you remember when Wayne Gretzky retired? Yes. You know, the NHL waived the yeah. three year waiting period and Got him in. inducted him into the Hall of Fame immediately. And it's like, yeah, yeah the difference was is the commissioner actually liked Wayne Gretzky, so no, probably not going to do that for Tom Brady. <laughs> no, and that's and that's probably true. And uh, you know, I'm kind of kind of shocked they didn't do that with uh, Michael Jordan too in the NBA, but you know, they made him wait it out. I I think he gets the Hall of Fame bump, and I think you see a steady rise. Yeah. You know, that is that is going, you know, long term, that is going to be just a consistent, you know, maybe the one percent, two percent, you know, year over year kind of thing, you know, every year. And it, and it becomes, you know, kind of on par with vintage, yes. you know, card where you, you know, you do see a small, you know, for the most part, a small but steady increase uh, on a year over year basis with, you know, taking in, you know, market conditions into account and things like that, sure. too. All right. Um, 
I completely yeah. agree with you. I I don't know if you're going to see much of a bump. I think you're going to like immediately. I think you're going to see a lot of cards sold because people buy them. And so you might see a tiny bump because a lot of people are buying. And so the the supply may be less for the demand for that time being, you know what I mean? Yep. And what's available, not overall, but for the time being. So I think you're going to see some sort of a bump. But then, like you said, Tom Brady, I don't think you're going to see astronomical bumps at any time, not even the Hall of Fame or anything like that, because I think a lot of that's baked in. But you are going to see this is someone who's bigger cards, especially autos, because he has so few um, yeah. and things like that. They're going to continue to rise. You may have some that, that you know, don't set record sales, but for the most part, a lot of his stuff is going to continue to set record sales. Contenders as they sell will probably keep outselling each other, you know, yeah. a little bit each year. I mean, he's that type of player. It is going to be interesting to see how this last year affects everything. Um, not going out when he probably should have. Um, well, I think, it, I think I we've think, seen it, but I, I think we've seen it because the, over the last, this last season, his prices are down. Right. And, and not that, all of that is due to the market conditions. Yeah. I mean, a lot of that is due to the fact that he played like crap. Yes. But I think, I think Tom Brady's cards, at least long term, when we're looking at the market, I think you said it best. It's going to be like vintage. I mean, he's going to be one of the most, in demand cards, no matter what, once he's retired every year, all the time and stuff's going to continue to rise. It's just, I don't think you're going to see those meteoric bumps. I mean, who knows? Maybe he does something incredible outside of the sport that changes the world. Who knows? He has Tom Brady. Um, I mean, in Ted, they did try and steal his jizz. So he, he does have magical powers, but you know, and that is, that is true. And he's got the new movie and he's got the new movie out. Yeah. Uh, this week yeah so you know. i mean may, maybe he goes mainstream hollywood like the rock and gets even bigger post, <laughs> post retirement <laughs> who, who knows with tom brady but uh the man i love to hate tom brady hanging up the cleats for now i still think it's for good but we shall see but scott let's move on now from a quarterback that's hanging up the cleats to a couple other quarterbacks that are uh hanging up their cleats, but not for good, just because they failed to make the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is set, which we'll have our Super Bowl talk next week. We'll do our picks and everything. And I will I will hold on. Before you get into that, I do want to say that, wow, um, the two of us both wound up with last week's episode. We picked the same teams to make it to the Super Bowl. We were both wrong very wrong yeah I, I do want to point that out because when you know this is one of the few shows that when when we get it wrong and in this case we got it horribly wrong oh yeah bad i you know we're gonna come out and tell you that hey uh we fucked up yeah so i hopefully nobody you know placed any bets based upon you know our predictions. i mean i did <laughs> and, and i will say that i think one of the games would have gone completely different had their quarterback not made injured early in the game yes. yeah let, let's be honest there. Um, but yes, yeah, so the the Super Bowl is set, of course, Philly and uh, Kansas City. So we'll, we'll touch on them a little later. But the quarterbacks, uh, and we'll touch on the quarterbacks here too as well. But I want to talk about the quarterbacks that are left, obviously Mahomes and Hurts, and the quarterbacks that didn't make it. Purdy, you know, Herbert, Burrow. I mean, you look at the names of these quarterbacks that, that got so close but ended up not making it. And their market, because I have a rant I'm going to go on here in a minute, but I want to get your opinion on everything. But what do you what do you uh, think about, you know, the the quarterback market as as they get eliminated, as the season comes to an end? I, you know, we all know how finicky, you know, the collectors and the fans and stuff like that. And, you know, I don't you know, they, they see like when the Chargers went out. And, you know, obviously that knocked out Herbert. Yeah. And, you you know, people are, you know, hating on him and, you know, prices went down. All the people, you know, hey, buying, buying Herbert at 20 percent of comps, you know, that kind of stuff. I, I think they're failing to look at the totality of the situation right. as to why they got knocked out. You know, it's kind of similar to, OK, well, Purdy's not in the Super Bowl because Purdy got hurt. <laughs> Yeah. early in the game and yeah. then when he came back out people are getting on him well, why isn't he throwing the deep out well, 
the dude had a torn UCL. Yeah. He basically needs Tommy John surgery. Right. And the fact that he was even able to throw the ball, like, period. Yes. Is is miraculous. His injury is, is I would say, is probably the reason that, one, it wasn't a closer game. Yeah. You know, defense oh, has yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, but that's another story. But, you know, they couldn't do anything on offense because – they had nobody to throw the ball. Johnson was a bust. Yeah. You know, but you're talking about, you know, your fourth string oh, quarterback, yeah. Yeah. you know, coming in and playing in the NFC championship. It's like, oh, OK, who would have thought this would happen? Yeah. And by the way, a fourth string quarterback who had played for four, was it 14 different yes, teams? Yes, yes. That man. Uh, it was 07 or 08 or something ridiculous like that. Yes. Um, you know, that that's one thing yeah. that drives me nuts, dude. Like, OK. The, the, I'm going to use Brock Purdy as an example. I've seen so many posts that have just driven me crazy about Brock Purdy, blah, blah, blah. Oh, he lost. This proves that he can't handle it. He's a bust. Ha ha. All these Brock Purdy cards are going to be worth $10 in the future, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is the dumbest thing that I see in the hobby, and it is so cyclical, and it drives me fucking crazy because okay yes all right he lost obviously his stuff is going to go down a lot of people's stuff is going to go down it's my favorite time to start buying that's what happens in the hobby but they they say oh why did these people pay this big money on these cards well because maybe they believe in him and you you know my three my three-year rule um so it You've got to give these guys a chance to develop. We're looking at these young guys and judging their entire career before they've even played five years in the league. Look at Jalen Hurts right now. Jalen Hurts at, at, during year two was considered the big – it was a toss-up between Fields or Hurts, and it was Hurts possibly being a massive bust. Look what he's been able to do. What Brock Purdy is going to do, we have no idea. But – the, but this whole getting on and just embracing the fact that cards are dropping tremendously is just so stupid to me. And now that the season's over, they're going to have a basketball player in a, in a week once they finally start paying attention to basketball. It'll be someone in basketball for a little bit, then baseball, then we'll find someone in football, and it's just going to rinse and repeat itself. It drives me crazy. So... I do have a concern about Brock Purdy. I think there is one legitimate concern about Brock Purdy. What's that? And that concern is Trey Lance. Well, yes. By the time they come back, Lance is going to be healthy. You know, he'll be play, he'll be healthy to play yeah. again. Purdy should be recovered relatively close to the start of training camp. Yep. You know, even if he does have to have surgery. Garoppolo, I believe his contract is up after yeah. the year or after believe, this year, so yeah. he's not going to be a You know, he's not going to be a factor here, but who is going to be the starting quarterback in San Francisco? Yeah. Purdy has proven that he can, he can do it, but so is Lance. So is Trey Exactly. Uh, You know, although the one knock I have against Lance is that he lost to the Bears, you know, week one. Now, granted, the weather conditions and, you know, they were in week one, not the glorified preseason game. Let's be. Well, but they were also basically playing the game in a kiddie pool. Yes. Yeah. So, yes, it's, you know, true. not exactly normal conditions. So if Trey Lance becomes the starter again, Purdy is the backup. Yep. And Lance plays the entire season and Purdy doesn't really get a lot of action. You know, all right, I can see a drop in value on that because he was relegated to backup status. But that's the concern. That's So it's got nothing to do with his potential or his skill or anything like that. I It's solely due to the fact that he may not be you know, the starting quarterback next year because their starter is coming back. Right. And I mean, Ed, how does he feel about that? Does it force a trade? There, There's a lot of stuff. I will say the 49ers are just loaded with some possibilities if they want to move on and be content with a Josh Johnson type backup. But I think they just saw why you need a good backup. But you know, it, when we're talking about the, the hobby and the market, yeah, whoever ends up with that backup gig, that's that's going to be interesting to see how it goes. Do people say, up? Oh, he's the backup and give up on him? Or does that turn into the prospect of like, oh, he's on the, like the Jordan Love effect, you know, oh, he's on the bench, but he's yeah. coming. And so what what happens there? I mean, you you could have theoretically two of the most hyped 
and most in-demand quarterbacks going into next year being on the same team. So I, I think, I honestly think that they both remain, you know, they're both going to stay in San Francisco next year. I think the I question think is which one of them is going to not be there long-term, right? Because it's, it is going to come down to, because you've got, they're literally a year apart yep. as far as draft status. You know, we're not talking about a situation where love comes in. He's got a few years because he's playing behind yeah, Rodgers yeah. who's getting older and things No, like you got to pay these guys. Yeah. There is going to come a time where, one of them, I and they're not gonna they're not gonna pay him both. No, but so one of them will get traded, mm-hmm. and with the question is going to be which one. And I, I I think it all depends on who stays healthy. I mean, Lance could come out and get hurt in week three, week four, and then you know Purdy takes over, finishes the rest of the season, and now all of a sudden it's probably going to look like Lance is right. going to get yeah. traded, and Purdy is going to remain the starter, or it could be it could be the other way around. It could be that Purdy never gets any playing time because Lance remains healthy. And now all of a sudden Purdy's the one that's going to be on the trading block. Yeah. Well, I will, I will say one thing, you know, I, I Brock Purdy to me, let those cards fall if you want to people, but I giving up on him is something I would definitely not do. Cause like I said, I think the, the quarterback situation there is going to be interesting and it might not be a, uh, a three week flip or a two month flip. But I think down the line, I think Purdy is a pretty strong yeah. investment, especially if you're looking at where his cards are now, when they settle and go back down to non, you know, Super Bowl or on hype type of stuff. But they're not going to, I don't think they're going to trade either one of them this no. year because the quarter, the draft class with quarterbacks this year is actually pretty decent. Yeah. Holton Hol- Ayers from till- ECU. He, he's coming exactly. Now. So I think they're going to either 2024 or 2025 when the quarterback class coming out of college may not be as strong. That would be the time to trade one of the two of them because you've got you're going to get the better value for them. Absolutely. And uh, speaking on Holton Ayers, mark my words, he's coming. Bowl MVP, Senior Bowl MVP, and then the NFLPA Bowl MVP. You watch this, dude. He's coming. But anyway, from the East Carolina University, of course. But we've got two quarterbacks in the Super Bowl, Mahomes and Hurts. What do you think the Super Bowl does to their respective values in the hobby? Well, Mahomes, you know, he had a massive high from a value standpoint a couple years ago. And his stuff has fallen off a lot, you know, compared to that. Not all of it is, you know, is because of his play or anything like that. But the a good chunk of it is. He has to win in order to see a a large yeah. bump. And I think and honestly, I think it's a short term bump at that. Hertz, on the other hand, I think he's I think he gets the bump, regardless of whether or yeah. not he wins or loses, as long as he plays a really good game. And I, I honestly think this is gonna be a really close game. So, I, so I don't do see I. it being a yeah, I don't see it being a blow. No, I think, like you said, Mahomes, I, a, a lot of this almost with Mahomes and his pricing, I think is almost baked in as he's going to be one of the next heir apparents. And so I, I think a lot of his stuff is really kind of already there. But when you look at Hertz, this is a season and this is a run where he's establishing himself as one of those mainstays in the hobby. I and I, I agree with you. If he if he performs in the Super Bowl even with a loss, if he has a good game, shows he belongs and you know the, and can keep it competitive and his stats look good, he doesn't turn the ball over a ton, you know, et cetera, et cetera. He's going to get a bump for a long time, and I think people are going to look at him, maybe not in the same breath as Mahomes, because people have him so far ahead of everyone else, and which is, is debatable, but they have him so far ahead of everyone else, this could put Hertz, you know, right below him and in that next tier. Yeah, exactly, and Hertz has one thing going for him that Mahomes doesn't. As far as I know, Hertz does not put ketchup on everything. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's a major yeah, negative. Yeah, major negative. When it comes to... Comes to Mahomes, and don't get me wrong. Look, I like ketchup on certain things. Great on hamburgers, things like that. But you're putting it on steak, you're putting it on hot dogs, which is like sacrilegious here in Chicago. They'll actually arrest you for putting ketchup on a hot dog in Chicago. But that's just I, I don't know. I, I I just don't. I can't pull for somebody who puts ketchup on everything. Yeah, no, no, no. I understand you there, but you know, 
We'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, one thing's for sure. It's going to be interesting. There's going to be a lot of movement with a lot of uh, a lot of quarterbacks in particular and a lot of position players. There's a lot of position players that are going to be impacted by this as well. We'll kind of focus on the Super Bowl and uh, some of the players in it and their market value and everything like that on next week's show when we do our Super Bowl preview. But uh, it is definitely going to be interesting with all these quarterbacks. Absolutely. But you know what? Speaking of a guy who puts ketchup on his hot dogs. Yeah. Let's talk about LeBron for a minute. All right. And and I just I want to preface that for those of you that are not from Chicago, when you say somebody puts ketchup on their hot dog, that is the biggest insult yes. that you can you you can lay on yes. somebody here. So yeah, that you know my feelings on LeBron. Oh yeah. Um but let's talk about let's talk about that for a minute because the dude is I mean, look, he's had an amazing career. There's no doubt that he's a great player. There's no doubt he's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. He's, what, 300 points away from the score? You know, yes, he's approaching the all-time scoring, scoring record. And you're seeing, you know, when we talked about this a little bit before the show, you're seeing a massive increase percentage-wise in the card in market. For quite him. a few key cards. Now, not, I mean, not everything across the board. I, well, actually, most stuff is up, but a lot of it, the top Chrome uh, PSA 10s and things like that. I mean, you're looking at over 25, 30 percent increases in those over the last couple of weeks. As he's a pro and he's played, 50, I think maybe I think he played, let's see, he played last night, 16 or 17 games all season. That's all he's played. And I mean, granted, every game he plays, he's putting up absurd numbers, but he is approaching that all time scoring record. And that is something that I assumed was baked in. I thought everyone just figured that that was going to happen and he, it was just going to pass by and be nothing. But you're seeing it in the market. And if you go to one of our awesome sponsors, Card Ladder, and you look at their ladder where they've got a lot of his key cards and you look at a lot of his sales and his trends, every card you can click on is going up. And on their card ladder, his num- the number one card on the ladder right now is the 2003 Ultimate Collection Auto out of 250. He's on there like crazy and stuff that, I mean, the value right now is at 60 grand. I mean, these things are approaching not ultimate hype level, you know, uh, prices, but they're getting back up to where these are significant increases. And and it's surprising to me. Anytime, anytime you wind up with, you know, a, you know, 30 to 40 percent, you know, or higher increase over a short period of time, you know, which we're talking about a matter of a couple of weeks, yeah. you know, that that's a pretty significant increase. And, and I'm, and I'm not talking about, and like, that doesn't apply to like stuff that's under $10. Right. You know, right. but I, I just want to, you know, want to put that out there. But when we're talking about that for a, you know, something like a LeBron tops Chrome rookie, you know, that's kind of a surprise. The biggest, and it's not really a surprise that the ultimate uh, out of two fifty is not, you know, it is seeing a large increase because, you know, again, the more limited the print run on something, the, right. the, the you know, better it's going to do, you know, in situations like this. So I, I kind of understand that. But I am surprised at, at how high it's going, because this is one of those things where it's like the season started. You know, LeBron was not far away from, you know, the scoring record. And everybody kind of assumed at this point he was going to hit it. Yeah. You know, at some point this season, the question is when, mm-hmm. you know, and. 300 point, you know, 300 points away, you know, he's got to average 30 points for the next 10 games, assuming he plays 10 games. But here, just uh, just as an update, like I was saying, his tops Chrome in the last month, a rate of growth of 30.26 percent from 5,800 to now it's currently at 7,555 with a high sale of 8,523 in the last month alone. So, the, I mean, this stuff's rising. And I think he's I kind of in that the, Brady boat. I think he's kind of in that Brady boat. Yeah, I, I just don't know what to think about it because, you know, we've got a, obviously a milestone event coming up. Yeah. But at the same time, we, you know, he's getting older. He's playing fewer games. His team's um, terrible. His team's terrible, which shouldn't which shouldn't be terrible. And that's the no. thing. Well, they no. haven't had AD. When they have LeBron and AD on the court together, if they can ever keep him on the court, um, which I think they're 
I think, I mean, there's a million teams in the NBA right now around 500. I think they just look at the records and say, okay, we can get into the postseason. Let's just get these guys healthy. I don't think they're trying. I think, I, I literally think they're just coasting because they know they can get in. Now that's a dangerous game they're playing because there's some crazy good young teams yep. that could easily beat them if they don't start to pick it up after the All-Star game. But I do think after All-Star Weekend, you see a completely different Laker team. This team is right now, let you know, coasting, going through the motions, letting LeBron play a little bit, AD's recovering. Let, let's see what happens when the Lakers are actually on the court. Because this isn't really the true Lakers yet. But like I said, there's a ton of young teams out in the, out in the West that I like way more than L.A. Oh, I, I would agree. I don't, and even if the Lakers do some, you know, end up making the playoffs, I don't think they make it to the conference final game. No, I don't either. I'm, no, 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 not even, yeah. not even close. I think they're, um, I honestly think they're a first round exit. Well, but with a, with a team that is that stacked, making it to the final, you know, if you, anything short of making it to the finals oh, is, is, is a fail, is a failure. Absolutely. So, but I'm, yeah, but I'm curious to see, you know, when he hits that, you know, are the prices baked in now? Or are we going to see an even bigger bump when he when he actually crosses? Yeah, is this the start of something? You know, going up. Is this something that's going to be a continuing trend as everyone waits for him ultimately to play with his son and then retire? Or uh, since we all know that's the game plan, um, is it? Or is this? Uh, Maybe just a couple people wanting to grab him real quick because I, I think he's but we'll, and we'll kind of end it with this. But I think he's in a Brady level when he retires as his cards are just going to continue to go up. You're going to have your haters. But Michael Jordan had a million haters when he played. Look at how he's viewed now. And, you know, LeBron will be viewed the same way, I think, in 10, 20 years. And so I, I think his cards can, are in that Brady era when he does retire. But to see this increase now was quite shocking to me because I really assumed that this was baked in. I did not think that this was going to be something where all of these cards, including just his base tops chrome PSA 10, which does have a couple thousand in pop we're going to go up that much. That was the, that's quite shocking to me for a record that was, I mean, it was a guarantee that it was going to be broken. Yeah. Yeah. There was no, there was no question about it, but you know, knowing that, you know, he was, he was not done this year, you know, knowing, you know, that he's going to play another couple of years until, you know, he gets, you know, I, he wants to, I know he wants to play one season with his son yeah. and, you know, I think, I mean, honestly, as much as I don't like LeBron, I think that would actually be cool because I think It'd that be would be the first cool. time. I think it'd be the first time that you'd have a father and son playing together on the same team yeah. in in the NBA. Yes, he's already playing against uh, opponents' kids yeah. that he played against. Now, ultimately, he'd get to play with his kid. It's a it's a pretty amazing accomplishment. But uh, oh, I do, and I, I do want to say that a father father and son playing together on the same team has happened before. Yep, Gordy Howe and his kids. Um, yes, you know, played in the NHL together. Yeah, but I, I don't think it's happened really anywhere else. No, I, I I mean don't don't quote me as that, but I'm I almost guarantee it maybe on a smaller level never definitely nothing on a uh on a superstar all-star level like this but one thing's for sure in order to get it done he is probably gonna have to take a pay cut to go somewhere else because uh just how salary caps work luckily he doesn't have to worry about bills however we do so guys we'll be right back and we are back so we're recording on February first, mm -hmm. and we're gonna start. We're gonna start doing something that we should have been doing from the beginning. And you know, at the beginning of the month now, we're gonna forego the movers and shakers yes. segment. And what we're gonna talk about is the excitement coming in the hobby over the next thirty days, or in this case, twenty eight days. <laughs> we're gonna talk about what's coming up on the release calendar. Yes, what do we get to open? What? Yeah, what? What are we gonna be ripping? You know, what are we going to watch the breakers go crazy over? What can we expect as far as monster hits being funneled through the back door in boxes to backyard breaks and all that right. kind of stuff? So we're taking a look at the February release calendar. Yes. And I want to bring up a couple of highlights. Things are things that are, you know, staples in the hobby, things that are I, I'm 
really excited about. No, I will say February is before we uh, kick off with some of the names. February is really when, at least in my opinion, the the hobby year truly begins. January, you kind of ease into it. February, it kind of kicks into gear. Yeah, that that is true, with the exception of a product that is releasing today. And it's actually a great product. I love this product. Upper Deck Synergy Hockey is coming out today. Nice. Well, no, not really. It's 2122. Yes, I know. Upper Deck Synergy Hockey. I know. They are still, still behind. I, I It um, blows my mind that, I know. that they haven't been able to catch up or scrap something or... I mean, the, you can't do anything in hockey at all right now outside of young guns. Like you can't. No, and and that brings up and that brings up a good point because series one's been out for a while for twenty two yeah. twenty three for that season. And guess what? Series two is coming out. Yep. later this month. I'm but yeah, we got 2021-2022 releases coming out in February of twenty three. <laughs> exactly something yeah something something's a little off on that so what we got coming up so today we actually have a cool uh, panini zenith is coming out today for football we've got synergy hockey and then we've got tops gilded collection baseball yes which um it, it actually looks like a pretty fun product yeah it, it reminds me of the old school um the diamond anniversary edition almost yep. parallels it's really cool. Yeah. Other things that I'm excited about next week, we've got Panini Immaculate UFC. Yes. Coming out, which is always a always a fun uh, product. One that's coming out on the 10th, which I am I, I'm curious to see what they're going to wind up doing with it is 2023 Leaf Floyd Money Mayweather Collection. Yep. I love Floyd Mayweather. Uh, the dude is. I mean, aside from being an amazing boxer, the dude is just a character. Yeah. So I, I'm curious to see if you know he's done any you know, cool inscription autos or anything like that. Um, you know, with, with some fun things that have come out of his mouth in the past. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that one. You've also got, got some really cool stuff coming out. Like, uh, obviously Bowman Chrome, uh, draft Sapphire, but then you've got, um, one of my favorites tops Chrome, Ben Baller. Uh, coming out again, Ben Baller edition. I I always love that set. Well, at the end of the month, and this is this is something different. We've also got 2022 Topps Chrome Sonic Baseball. Yes, and I believe that is only being released in a light format. I have not seen any uh, any hobby variation on that, so I'm curious to see what's gonna what's gonna happen with that. We also have the second iteration of. Bowman Chrome University football. Yeah, with logos. Uh, okay, I was not aware of that. But that yes, awesome. there are logos on this year. The the mock-ups that they have out of the Georgia players. Now, I don't know if every card and everything will, but if you actually take a look, the mock-ups have logos. Yeah, I'm looking at Will Anderson of Alabama. It's got the Alabama A right there on it. So these actually, yeah, Caleb Williams, uh, USC, these do have logos and everything. Now, the jerseys, for some reason, some of them still seem to be airbrushed. But no, looking at these right now, they look amazing. And they've done something really cool. I, I told you guys that this was going to be the first edition was going to be very basic and just dipping their foot in the water. Look at the increases that you've got here. You've also got the back in time Bowman uh, throwback inserts this year. You've got Invicta. They've got the Invicta set this year, which well they do. They did that. They did that last year too, right? But now they've got the Big Kahuna, which is one of the really big inserts, and then you've got the Rambling Autos, which are some massive short prints, and you've also got a couple other new inserts. So they've really done a really good job with this. But now you've got logos. That is a huge difference yeah. for this product. That's good. That's going to be a that's going to be a game changer for the product. But so, yeah, that, you know, last year's product, they had the Golden Boy insert and the retro. And then in hobby, you had the Invicta. But now they're throwing in some additional inserts. I think I think it's going to be a, a really cool product. But the 15th is actually going to be a, a big day. So in addition to the Bowman Chrome University. You also have uh, Leaf Metal Draft Baseball. Yeah, you've got uh, the always favorite Donruss football. Yeah. Hey, coming out. staple of the hobby forever. Yep, exactly. Uh, Panini Immaculate WWE 
which should be a fun product. I've seen uh, they've they showed some photos of wrestlers signing some of the cards. You know how cool Immaculate gets with the memorabilia for sports with the shoes yep. and things like that. Just wait till you see this WWE. It might not be the most valuable stuff in the world. Wait till you see the cards. Oh, yeah. Now, Upper Deck is releasing three products that day. You've got Series 2 Hockey, which we mentioned earlier. Yeah. You've got Trilogy Hockey. Yes. Uh, which is the 20, and this is 2022-23 season. <laughs> and then they're dating at 2022 for some reason, but they're releasing Upper Deck Fleer Ultra Marvel Avengers. Yes. Which I think is actually going to be cool. And then the final one on the 15th that we absolutely have to talk about is a – it's the you know big product from a baseball standpoint series one uh for 2023 is coming out on oh the that team. that's a national holiday for baseball collectors it, it series one release day is huge and yep. this year um we've got something that's in my, at least to my knowledge has never been done before and I, i've got to commend tops for doing this for those of you unaware when tops put out the uh, mock-ups for the series one design there were massive complaints on twitter on social media about certain design elements of the card that they didn't like just certain things that they thought could be improved well for the first time at least that i can remember tops and fanatics listened to them and actually tweaked the base design and changed Really, all of the stuff that were the major complaints, they updated the right side to make sure the team name doesn't go under the player's secondary picture. The team logo has been uh, made a little smaller, and the rookie card logo has been adjusted a little bit. It really does give, it sounds like not too much and not really that big of a difference, but it actually looks beautiful, but it's very interesting to see a company this late in the design process. This stuff's coming out on the 15th and they made those changes. Like Now, granted, I know they've had the changes done for a long time. They listened to them as soon as they put the mock-ups out, but the... That, this is pretty cool to see some, yeah. to see someone tweak a design based on customer feedback. Oh no, I I agree. Um, and you know, props to Tops for you know absolutely you know going through and, and kind of doing that. All right, so I kind of want to go through the rest of the month and pick out some highlights here. So the seventeenth, we've got Don twenty twenty two twenty three Donruss basketball uh, coming out. That's always a, a popular product. 22nd, we've got 2022 Bowman inception baseball <laughs> Phoenix football is coming out on the 22nd as well as uh, prison premier league soccer, which should be a fun product. We've got uh, also rookie and stars football is coming out, uh, and Goodwin champions. Yeah. Uh, is coming out that day as well as revolution soccer. There's a lot of stuff on here that I was excited about. Um, and then, you know, there's some other smaller products and things like that that are coming out. But there's something that I noticed that does not have a date yet. It is just uh, kind of sitting in there as February 2023 to be determined. This is a good one because we talked a little bit about Upper Deck and their delays and things like that. We yeah. made fun of 21-22 Synergy coming out in 2023. Well, at some point this month, Cup is going to be making its return. Yes. But this is from the – wait, wait. Wait for it. The 2021 season. And it has been delayed almost every single time it's been put on the calendar. So I, we were talking about over-unders earlier. I think you have to put an over-under on if this does get released in February. <laughs> well, I think since they have it as the TBD, I, I think that it probably will. This is not. Yeah, it, it's one of those things. It's like. You know, we think they're delayed. I don't even remember. Was that was that Kaprizov's rookie year? Like, I'm trying to figure yeah. out like who the you know who the chase rookies right. are for that product. And and hopefully they they you know been sitting on a lot of the stuff for a while. And I hope so because if not, I'll tell you the next three years of upper deck stuff once they get to those products are going to be absolutely amazing because you know they they do things differently as opposed to massive redemptions. They just issue the cards and random sets later on once the cards are done and so well but they do they do do redemption right but i'm saying for the most part the, i mean almost yeah. every set has every big set has hundreds of cards from previous releases that people didn't even know were going to be on the checklist 
that ended up yeah. finally becoming part of the checklist. So maybe these delays make these next few years amazing. I don't know. Well, it's usually, you know, st- it's SP authentic and SP game use that usually have the, um, yeah, the massive previous updates, year. Yeah. 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 The updates for other sets from previous years. So that's possible, but there, I, I, I'm just going to put this out there. You're releasing a product from the 2020 to 2021 season. I know. In February of 2023. Not only that, your your highest end set. Yes. But here's where I'm going with this. There better not be a single redemption. Oh, God, in that yeah. Product. No, no. Because two, you know, you're basically releasing it two years late. Yeah. And there's no excuse to not have those cards back. Uh, and live in the product there i i'm going to scream from the top of the rooftops if i see redemptions coming out of that product yes no 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 one one redemption out of that product and that's that's a massive massive fail by upper deck if you if you decide to not scrap the product and you're going to put it out this late you better get it right yep absolutely this should be every autograph is live yes uh, there is no reason for a two year late product to come out with redemptions in them. Yeah. Or any issues, period. Like, you know, missing cut autos, things like that. Whatever it is, you know, get it right, guys. It, it's two years. But yeah. February, man, absolutely. It's a stacked month. I mean, if you look at it, February really is a pretty stacked month. You've got a lot of great stuff. We mentioned a lot of it. There's also some really good online exclusives uh i'm interested to see the tops wander franco sets i like those tops cross player sets i've taken in for uh gem mint a lot of the autographs from previous sets and i think they're really cool looking and i'm interested to see some of the uh some of the new sets i'm glad to see zenith football back yep. zenith was something i grew up with and so i'm actually really excited for zenith because it looks a little a little updated, obviously, but it does look like they kept some of the original feel to it, and they do have some throwbacks. And so that was a set that was very near and dear to me as a kid. Well, in the so, last couple of years, hasn't that Zenith has been part of Chronicles, right? Yes, they've had it's been part of a uh, they've had just the base cards, and yeah. it's been a. Uh, retail exclusive in hanger packs last year i believe and i don't know what it was the previous year but it's been a short print subset where you get like four of those for per pack you know what i mean and it was just the basic zenith brand but now you're getting a full-on extended release which i'm happy about it might not you know command the most money in the entire world but it's going to be a good low to mid-end product but it brings that nostalgia factor back for me, Yeah, you know, and and if they utilize the old school foil and the the beautiful foil and things that Zenith was known for, they could have another massive hit on their hands. So I'm excited to see Zenith and a couple other uh, really interesting products come out, but February, definitely a stacked month in the, uh, in the re in the uh, release date calendar. Yeah. I I'm excited to see, you know, how, how some of these products do and yeah, um, you know, the stuff that comes out of them. So uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that as the month goes along. Absolutely. Well, guys, we will update you every single month. Like we said at the beginning of every month, we'll take a look uh, at what's coming up, give you guys a uh, give you guys a little breakdown and uh, prepare you for what you can see on Letter Rip and uh, what you can uh, go to the stores and buy. And in, in February, it looks like you're going to have quite a bit to choose from. Absolutely. And now that we're talking about February's release calendar, that means January is done. Yeah. And for those of you that follow soccer, you realize that January, hey, it's one of the two transfer windows throughout the year. Players can't move teams aside from during two months out of the year. Right. This month, there were some big moves that I, I want to touch on briefly because these guys, you're going to want to keep an eye on from a hobby standpoint because yep. they have moved to bigger leagues or bigger teams or, you know, they're getting they're going to wind up with more exposure based on where they're at and chasing down their stuff is probably going to be um, a smart move at this point. Oh, yeah. The biggest move so far, or not so far, uh, the biggest move in January was uh, happened in the last couple of days of the month, and that was uh, Enzo Fernandez, Argentinian national, 
had an amazing World Cup yeah. uh, this year. He was playing with Benfica, mm -hmm. uh, which I believe is a Portuguese uh, Portuguese team. He made the move to Chelsea. Yeah, in the Premier League. <laughs> there's Before. a bump. That there's a big bump. Yeah, I am really excited to see what he does against Premier League competition. Me too. You know, Benfica has been a, a relative staple team in the Champions League. Over oh the yeah, last years. But you know, I so he's gotten he's gotten play. You know experience against top teams but now he's moving over to the top league and yeah. it's going to be it's going to be a huge to see what what he's able to do and if he's able to help Chelsea move up the table because right now they're sitting outside of European competition yeah. and it's, yeah they it, need some help yeah it's not a good look for them couple other ones uh Joao Felix yes got loaned from Ath Atletico Madrid to Chelsea and his first game immediately got a red card and got suspended for three games. Yeah, that's my uh, boy. <laughs> yeah, Joao Felix has a ton of cards that are out there. Yeah. Um, and don't get me wrong, La Liga is probably the number two league in Europe as far as talent goes. And Has level to be. Competition. I don't see that big of a bump coming no. for him. But there, worldwide, there is a lot more people following Chelsea than there are following Atletico Madrid. And he's had, he's always had that that collector base in the soccer market. Yes, guys, sorry to disappoint all you soccer haters. The market still exists and is doing great. Ha ha. But he's always had a, a decent following and a decent amount of supporters that want to see him succeed. Yeah. And so if he does and Chelsea does have that resurgence, I could see him, like you said, it's not going to, it's not going to 500% and Brock Purdy overnight, but he's going to, he's going to have, you know, a solid increase. Yeah. No, I would agree. And then uh, the last one, as far as Chelsea goes, is uh, Mikolo Mudrik, who uh, came over from Shakhtar Donetsk. And frankly, I'm surprised that team is still playing right now because they're right. in the middle of a freaking war zone. But uh, he went over to Chelsea earlier in the month, um, played a couple of games already, and he's he's been fairly solid. Cody Gakpo moving from PSV to Liverpool. We talked about that earlier in the month, I think. Yeah, so he does not have a lot of cards out there. No, nope. once he does, I think it's going to be you know, a huge thing. Jorginho. Yeah, that's a big this is a big that's, move. A big that's move. A pretty big move. move from Chelsea to Arsenal. Yep. Um, if they if Arsenal can hang on and win the Premier League, I think it's going to be a you know, and Jorginho plays well. I think that's going to be a, a big bump for him. Two younger guys that you probably haven't heard of: Paul Onachu. I think I'm spelling his name right. Uh, went from Genk to Southampton. Yeah, he's uh, I can't remember if he's the 21 year old or the 20 year old, but um, he's been a solid player. And then also to Southampton, we've got. Uh, Kamaldine Sulemana from Rennes to Southampton. He actually played a couple of games in the World Cup for Ghana. Mm -hmm. And I believe that it's either, it's one of the two of them have played 19 games, scored 16 goals with their respective teams. And so far this season, I'm looking for, for big things out of them. No, those are two. Those are two of the guys that you're going to be seeing most of the hype on. And some of the big, big, when cards come out, when uh, some of these upcoming sets are put out this year, a lot of those sets are going to be leaning on on those two names. Well, but here's the thing. So uh, Prism Premier League is coming out this month. Yeah. I don't I don't think any of these have been done. You know, I think all like none of the guys from the January transfer window are going to make it into that product. No, it's going to take it's going to be late in the year before. Yeah. Before, um, yeah. Now you may see Topps Chrome UEFA. Yeah. Uh, they may be in there in time for that, especially with Enzo Fernandez. He'll be in there with Ben, you know, regardless, probably with Benfica. Yes. Hopefully they can get an update in time, get him in Chelsea. Kit. But there's another one. Actually, there's two more that I had on my list here. One of them is Wout Weghorst uh, moving to Man U. Mm -hmm. That should be, a, you know, that should be good from a say he had a great World Cup with the Netherlands. And here's the one. Here's the one that was so under the radar that I, I just wanted to throw out there and this is a guy that we have we should have been talking about for years and years and years yeah. especially being one of the few americans playing yeah, at the top level weston mckinney moved from juventus to leeds yeah and that's a big one because juventus just got charged with a whole bunch of you know potential financial crimes they were docked right. 15 points in the you know in the league so they are no longer really in contention to be playing in the Champions League or the Europa League or even the Europa Conference League next year. Yeah. You know, and granted, I don't think Leeds is either, but No, but this gives McKinney a chance 
to also shine. Yes. He could end up really shining there and having the spotlight on him. Um, I don't think people expect him to win championships, but he's going to get the PT. He's going to get the starts. He's yep. going to get the opportunities, and he's going to finally have that spotlight on him. And that could do wonders for someone, yes. like you said, in the soccer world, we should have been paying attention to. And you would think we would have been talking about for a couple years. No, exactly. Even even with Leeds being a mid to low table team, right. he's going to get a lot more exposure there than he was getting at Juventus. You know, he's moving to a team that gets a lot of TV time that uh, is playing in the top professional league in the world, yeah. you know, from basically the third, you know, number three or number four professional league. I think and I loved I love to see it. I'm, and I'm happy as hell for for Weston McKinney. No, me too. I I'm, I expect big things out of him. I hope so. I got some awesome cards. I'd love for him to <laughs> finally hit that potential, too. But um, no, I love Weston McKinney, obviously, U.S. boy. So, you know, hopefully uh, everything works out for him. But way under the radar move that could provide some uh, major hobby dividends. But guys, definitely uh, take a listen to some of those names. I know some of them may be unfamiliar to you, but I highly suggest doing some research as those are some moves right there that could really alter some teams and some players, at least in terms of the hobby, their value going forward. So very interesting end of January and a very interesting transfer month. That's for sure. Yep. All right, y'all. Well, I think, what do you think, Scott? Probably a good time to wrap up today's show. I think that is a good time to wrap up today's show. All right. Well, before we do go, guys, once again, we always want to thank our wonderful sponsors. Of course, Card Ladder, Show Your Slabs, Slab Strong, Denver Card Shows, Vandy Slabs, and Treasure Hunters. Could not do this show without you guys. New episodes of Letter Rip coming out every single week. Just did another episode uh, earlier this week with an amazing poll. Definitely check it out over on our YouTube Make sure to follow us on all of our socials, especially over on Instagram. Uh, we're about 50 to 60 followers away before we do a really cool celebration and giveaway over on there. So make sure to follow us on Instagram and all the socials and all that. And of course, Hobby Hotline every Saturday and every single Tuesday. Of course, Saturday on Bench Clear Media. Tuesdays over on the Hobby Hotline YouTube. Make sure to check all those out, and uh, we will be back next week. But until then, you guys know the deal. Keep ripping those packs, pulling those hits. We'll talk to you then. Peace. <laughs>